Manners maketh man is supposed to be the Kingsman motto, but the new film has shown really bad manners making us wait so long. After being delayed so many times, the Kingsman is finally set to appear and reveal the origins of the famous organization that first appeared in 2015's Kingsman, The Secret Service. Underneath the surface of this franchise are a ton of real-life secrets, clues, and life-threatening dangers you likely missed the first time around. And so, let's take a look. The only thing more dangerous than training to be a Kingsman is filming a scene where you're training to be a Kingsman. According to director Matthew Vaughn, things nearly took a fatal turn during filming when the computers had a malfunction. He shouted action, and suddenly everyone was underwater. Everything that was meticulously planned and rehearsed was floating along with cameramen and cast alike. Everyone around them started diving in to save people from drowning. At the very least, the actors got some good motivation for looking scared when the water came rushing in, so no wonder that scene was so convincing. If you're like me, there's one scene in the Golden Circle that is unforgivable. That is, of course, the choice for the film to off one of the greatest characters in the franchise, Mark Strong's Merlin. It's been an honor. While I will always be angry at Matthew Vaughn for this, in his defense, he did not want to do it either. Originally, Merlin was supposed to survive the scene and come back injured, but breathing. Test audiences apparently felt cheated by the scene, pulling on their emotions just to have it mean nothing mere minutes later. Hopefully none of those audience members watched the Chewbacca scene in The Rise of Skywalker. The last of the Star Wars anthology films, Solo almost looked very different. Alden Ehrenreich had the daunting task of replacing Harrison Ford as Han Solo. It was very nearly snatched away from him by the star of Kingsman himself, Taron Edgerton. He was also in the running to play Solo, but had to drop out due to the shooting schedule of the Golden Circle. I'm sure Disney will find a role for him in the MCU at some point. Don't know everything. I mean, he's been rumored to play pretty much everyone from Johnny Storm to Wolverine, so it's only a matter of time. For many, Valentine's Lisp seemed like a really weird character choice. It's all good. This was a very deliberate joke about the odd quirks that many Bond villains were known for. It's like those old movies we both love. Think uh, Mads Mikkelsen's bleeding eyes in Casino Royale or Blofeld's infamous scar. Well, this specific quirk was actually based on something from Samuel L. Jackson's past and not James Bond's. Apparently, Sam Jackson actually had a lisp in his younger days, which he had to overcome to be an actor. Man, I can't imagine the Ezekiel 2517 scene from Pulp Fiction with Valentine's voice. The entire character is also an attempt to merge the villainous Bond billionaire persona with the real-life villainous billionaire persona. I mean, Bond villains in the modern world don't really have to pretend they are not Bond villains anymore. If you read tomorrow that one of those guys was building a subterranean lair or a prototype satellite death ray, it wouldn't even be surprising. So it's kind of perfect that Kingsman managed to, to merge these two ideas so seamlessly. Now we just need the Bond movies to do the same. You just know that Silva from Skyfall would be such a successful influencer. Unfortunately, like Hogwarts before it, the Kingsmen don't actually exist, and I will never be able to learn how to fight with an umbrella while wearing a flawless suit. While those dreams have been tragically destroyed by cruel, cruel fate, the flawless suit is actually attainable. That's because the tailor shop used in the film is a real place. The Huntsman serves as the real-life inspiration for the film. The suits you can get there look just as good as those on screen. They just don't sell super secret spy gadgets. Or do they? Have you ever looked at Colin Firth in Kingsman and wondered why he looked like the gritty reboot of Austin Powers? I mean, how many pale English super spies with glasses can there be without any connection? Well, you aren't going crazy because they are actually both based on the same spy movie, Harry Palmer. That spy was played by none other than Sir Michael Caine. If the glasses were not a big enough giveaway, both franchises actually cast Caine in their franchises just to push the point home. While the Kingsman loves the James Bond film franchise more than any other, there are several other famous spy franchises the film series pays homage to. The most notable one is The Avengers. No, not the one with Captain America and Iron Man. I'm talking about the 1960s BBC show with super spies John Steed and Emma Peel. If the inspiration for the perfectly tailored fighting spies wasn't clear enough, Ray Fiennes actually played John Steed in the film adaptation of the series before starring in The Kingsman in virtually the same costume. Like Black Widow, No Time to Die, and Morbius, The Kingsman was delayed over and over because of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
It was originally supposed to come out in November of 2019, then February of 2020, then February 2021, then August 2021, and finally to December 2021. While this seems all over the place, that final date seems like it was fated to be the film's opening day. December 22nd, 2021 is actually lead actor Ray Fine's 59th birthday. Talk about having to wait a long time for a birthday present. When you think of grizzled action heroes, your first thought doesn't usually go to Mr. Darcy himself, Colin Firth. He's a surprising choice to play a guy so skilled with a gun that he makes John Wick look like he moves in slow motion. Well, apparently, Colin Firth was more than able to perform everything he needed for his big turn as an action icon. Firth evidently performed something like 80% of his own stunts for the film. Bravo. That's really impressive considering how ridiculous the stunts are for these movies. It's basically a bloody ballet with a handgun and an umbrella. Personally, I love seeing Mark Hamill in anything, no matter what the context is. Yes, even in Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back, still it was kinda weird to see him as Professor Arnold in the opening minutes of The Kingsman. I literally remember looking at my buddy and going, is, is, is that Luke Skywalker? Well, one reason why Hamill was cast had to do with the Kingsman comic. He was actually the first celebrity kidnapped in the book. The other reason he was cast? Well, that's just because Mark Hamill's awesome. What else do you need? This is one of the most gloriously gory action movies I've ever seen. It features a scene where a major protagonist blasts through a room full of people like he's the freaking Punisher and no one batted an eye. Well, apparently there was one scene that actually did cross a line. Originally, the agents were actually going to have to shoot their canine sidekicks with live ammo. This was apparently too dark for the movie that already featured exploding craniums, cell phones that made people attack each other, and Sofia Botella cutting people to pieces with her sword legs. As long as the puppies made it out though, everything's cool. Matthew Vaughn might be most known for his work on Kingsman today, but a few years ago, he was most known for his X-Men prequel First Class. He successfully took the franchise from a sci-fi action franchise with heroes in black leather uniforms to a slick comic book movie that embraced the 60s vibe of the original comics. Naturally, everyone thought that he'd follow this up with the film that wanted to put both sides of the franchise together, Days of Future Past. While Vaughn always loved the X-Men, his true allegiances lied with the Kingsman. This is me. He turned the film down, and it's been Oxford's, not Brogue's, ever since. As great as Taron Edgerton is as Eggsy in the Kingsman franchise, he very nearly was not cast. The first choice was actually Aaron Taylor Johnson from Matthew Vaughn's famous superhero movie with the title I can't say on YouTube. While Johnson missed his first chance to be part of the Kingsman franchise, the opportunity came around again. He will actually play an ancestor of Eggsy's in the prequel film, The Kingsman. He will play Lee Unwin, the first in the long line of his family to presumably become a super spy. Just hopefully it goes better for Lee than it did Eggsy's dad. The Kingsman may look like a bunch of spy movies thrown into a blender. It actually owes its plot to the play Pygmalion and its many, many adaptations ranging from Breakfast at Tiffany's to She's All That. The one that Kingsman likes to compare itself most to is Trading Places. That movie featured Eddie Murphy as Bill Ray Valentine, who trades stations in life with Dan Aykroyd's Louis Winthorpe III. The biggest reference to the film, aside from it getting name dropped that is, comes from when they repeat the lines looking good, feeling good when Eggsy finally puts on his suit. <laughs> There's one film in the Bond franchise that Kingsman the Golden Circle is obsessed with, and that is on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Depending on what Bond fan you ask, they might tell you that this is the best Bond film ever due to the intense action sequences and genuine emotional stakes, or that this is the worst Bond film ever due to George Lazenby. You can tell where Matthew Vaughn is on that debate. The Golden Circle not only deals with Eggsy struggling with maintaining a relationship with Tilde like Bond does with Tracy, but it also features a scene in the Alps, like the infamous one from On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Both movies end with their stars getting married or gaining golden circles, otherwise known as wedding rings. Man, they really thought that one through. The character of Poppy was a truly eccentric villain who had to be based on someone, right? Well, apparently she was based on several different people. The first was real-life television personality and convict Martha Stewart. Those inspirations are fairly obvious. For Julianne Moore, she picked a different point of reference. She was inspired by Gene Hackman's hammy performance as Lex Luthor in the original Superman films. So if you throw Lex Luthor and Martha Stewart into a blender, Poppy is what comes out? That seems about right, actually. 
If you could not tell already, Matthew Vaughn watched a lot of spy movies and TV shows growing up. Everything from In Like Flint to The Man from Uncle seemed to at least partially inspire Vaughn's take on the Kingsman universe. One of those was the classic Get Smart, which featured all sorts of wacky gadgets. One of the most famous was the telephone shoe. Well, apparently the Kingsmen were also a fan of Get Smart. They apparently used to keep telephones in their shoes too, long before cell phones became ordinary. I wonder if they made the drivable desk too. I'd like to think so. If there's one thing about the Kingsman film that a lot of people don't like, it's the ending where Eggsy gets a dirty, dirty gift for saving the world. For many, this was a rough tonal shift that just didn't make sense for the film. The intention behind the scene was to parody all of those scenes at the end of Bond movies where he makes a dirty pun about the girl he ended the movie with. Since they upped the violence expected from a British spy drama, they decided to up the dirty part as well with an explicit line that did away with the puns that just hinted at explicit content. You will never hear someone tell James Bond that Daniel Craig's legendary time as James Bond is coming to an end. While for many he is the greatest actor to ever embody the character, there are aspects of his Bond that don't quite cover everything the franchise is known for. Like Batman Begins, Casino Royale did away with all of the camp and presented a grittier James Bond more in line with something that you'd see in a Bourne movie. This inspired Kingsman to center itself on the camp and dial it up to 11. It focused on the campier era of Roger Moore's Bond while also tripling the violence. The Statesmen may not have hit as hard as the Kingsmen did. I mean, their spinoff got cancelled, but they sure did look cool. For instance, is there something familiar about Whiskey from the Golden Circle to you? No, not that he's the Red Viper from Game of Thrones or Mando from The Mandalorian. I mean, the character's look. He's very clearly modeled after the American heartthrob of his era, Burt Reynolds. The hat and the mustache are classic Reynolds all the way, though I don't remember him using an electric lasso in any of the movies. Maybe I missed that one. Sophia Boutella's role as Gazelle for the first Kingsman movie pretty much made her career. She followed it up with memorable roles in Atomic Blonde and Star Trek Beyond. Then she unfortunately got caught up in the terrible remake of The Mummy that didn't even have the decency to cast Brendan Fraser. It's kinda crazy to think that the role of Gazelle very nearly went to someone else. Olympic athlete Amy Purdy, who has prosthetic limbs of her own, was the first choice to play Gazelle. Unfortunately, she had a pretty good excuse that got her out of filming. She had to compete in the Olympics. I would say that that is a better choice, yes. The club scene in Kingsman was a huge twist for the characters. They thought that they were competing in a simple seduction competition, but it was really a brutal test of loyalty. They were drugged and then woke up seemingly captured by enemies. Talking to their captors was an immediate fail out of the program. If they had been paying attention to the club's name, they may not have been so surprised. It was literally called Herring, you know, as in Red Herring. The whole club was just a red herring. You know, for super spies, they really aren't that great at picking up clues, are they? The action in Kingsman is really over the top and choreographed like no other. Despite all the ridiculous action sequences, it's never unclear what's going on from moment to moment. That's because the film makes a deliberate choice to stay centered on the action no matter what. It's one of those things that you don't notice until you do, and then you can never stop noticing. They keep the action center frame so you're with it at all times without a single missed punch or shot. That's especially important in the church scene since there were like 10 million different brutal things all happening at once. Did Matthew Vaughn ever do anything as a kid aside from watch TV? I don't think so because these movies are bursting with references to old television shows. The robot dogs from the Golden Circle are references to the old television series Knight Rider. In that show, the living car had a red bar that moved back and forth. I mean, it's also a reference to the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica. Was there anything that Matthew Vaughn did not watch? The first Kingsman tried to slip a reference to the director past us without us noticing. In the film, Harry goes by the alias Dr. Devere. This is a reference to Matthew Vaughn's scandalous parentage. Mr. Devere, get the pleasure to meet you. He spent most of his life under the assumption that he was the son from Man From U.N.C.L.E. actor Robert Vaughn. Well, according to his mother, he's actually the son of Robert Albert Harley Devere Drummond, an English aristocrat. So going by the name Dr. Devere is a clever way of referencing what could be considered Matthew Vaughn's real name. Mr. Devere! 
Now that Daniel Craig is done with Bond, surely Kingsman will pull him in for at least a cameo, right? Who could possibly be a better villain for the series than him? Can I have another martini, please? Sure.